All right, let's get rid of the test material, I mean the shader. And uh, this is going to be the height of the thread. So let's go ahead and color it. And let's choose blue, and this is going to be height. Okay. And currently, this height information is ranging from 0 to 2. Okay. This is 0. Okay. And around here, it's uh, 0 0.5. And here, it's 2. So I want to force it down to uh, the 0 to 1 range. To do that, I would simply divide it by 2 to get it down to 0 and 1. Now, I want to separate the horizontal and the vertical thread using a mask. And to do that, we will simply use a greater than node. There we go. We have a nice mask for the threading. So now we can use this uh, mask to control the colors for the threads. So create a mixed color node and connect this mask to uh, the factor. And now we can choose two different colors for the threads. But uh, right now we have a little problem. You see the gaps kind of have the same color as the A color right here. So we need to get rid of the color in, in the gap. And to do that, we will simply multiply this with this uh, mask, these combined masks, okay? And simply maximum these together. There we go, we have uh, the alpha mask. This will also be our alpha. So we will multiply this color with the alpha to get rid of the color between the gaps. And uh, now, let's uh, create another test material and again create a bump we shouldn't have deleted these before okay so you see we now have some very nice threading going on and uh, let's go back here and change these colors I mean these uh, values let's say one and uh, three so now we have some very nice twill weave going on so anyway let's leave it as twill weave pattern like so and uh, maybe make it a little bigger so that we can see more clearly. And also, I think the gap is a little too big. So let's get out of the note and lower the gap. There we go. All right. Now I need uh, some ambient occlusion for the colors as well. So I'm going to move these a bit over here. And uh, this will be our ambient occlusion. So I'm going to multiply this with the colors. Okay, we have some nice ambient occlusion. And that's it with the color. So we can now connect the color to the uh, output. So go to the group and change this to color. Okay. And uh, also we need to connect the alpha to the output as well. This is the alpha. Anyway, let me just set a color for the alpha node. Let's go for red, I mean orange. Okay, and connect this to the output. This will be alpha. Okay, and next we will connect the normal. Okay. So, the uh, weaver is uh, pretty much done, but uh, we need to extract some more information about the weaver, I mean the fabric texture as well. For example, what if I want some color variation for individual strands? or if I want to have some textures on the strands. So we need to make some additional data, okay? So first, let's make the IDs for the threads. And to do that, we will go all the way back here and we will floor this texture coordinate like so, okay? And uh, let's see the individual channels, okay? This is the uh, X channel and this is the Y channel. So each of this will be a um, the ID for the strand, I mean the threads. And uh, however, there is a slight problem with the IDs because this is zero. And also, this is zero. So we have same IDs for vertical and horizontal threads. And I don't want that, okay? I want the, the ID for the X and Y channels to be slightly different. So I'll just add 0 0.5 to the Y axis like so. And uh, now we have uh, 1, 2, 3, and here we have 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, and so on. So now we have some proper IDs for the threads. Uh, it's time to combine these together. And we will be using this mask to combine the threads, I mean the IDs of the thread. So again, we will use a mix node, but this time we will use a mix float node to mix these together. So this is the uh, vertical thread, and this is the horizontal thread. 
So connect these in like so, and so. Now, I think we have to flip these. There we go. So this is the uh, IDs of the thread. Let's go ahead and uh, rename the output. This is the thread IDs, okay, and move it up here, okay. So let's say I want some color variations for the threads. I can now use this ID and put it into a white noise. There we go. And uh, now we have some nice randomization for the thread. And I can soft light this with the color. There we go. And increase this. Okay. So you see, I now have some very nice color variations for the threads. And uh, let's connect this here and connect this normal here and render. Okay. It looks very nice, right? Now, what if I just want color variations for one set of threads and not the other? So obviously, I need a mask to be extracted as well. So this is the mask. So I'm going to extract this like so. This is going to be mask. And let's place it here. So I can now put this mask here to limit the color variations. So you see, now I have color variations for the vertical strands, I mean threads, but not the horizontal threads. And I can invert this mask to isolate the horizontal threads instead of the vertical ones. So create a mask and subtract one. All right, so you see now I have color variations for the horizontal threads, but not the vertical ones, okay? And finally, the final thing I want to extract is the UV of the thread so that I can generate some additional textures for the individual thread. So let's go all the way back. Okay, and uh, now we can separate X, Y, Z, okay? So this will be the U direction of the horizontal thread, and this will be the U direction, I mean the U dimension of the uh, vertical thread. And with this one, this will be this will be the V of the horizontal thread, and this will be the V dimension of the vertical thread. So I can combine these into two separate vectors. Let's go ahead and create the combine X, Y, Z, okay? The X will be U and Y will be, will be V, okay? So again, this will be the U and uh, this will be V. Okay, so this is the UV of the uh, horizontal thread. And duplicate this node. And this will be the V and this will be the U of the vertical thread. Okay. And again, we will combine these together using the mask, this one here. So duplicate this and cut these two wires and change this to mixed vector, okay? And we will connect these two vectors. Let me just collapse these and move these over here. And uh, I think the, the wires are becoming rather messy. So I think it's about time I reconfigure some wiring. Okay. And again, we have to flip the uh, nodes like that. Okay, so we now have some very nice UVs for the, the threads. And uh, I think the wires are pretty bad. So anyway, I'm gonna move these here. All right. Now I can connect this here and call this UV map. Now. Nah. Red UV. Okay. And I will move this here. Now, nah, here. Okay. And for some reason, the normal was cut. So, where is it? I think at some point I accidentally deleted the bump map. So, let's go ahead and recreate that. Okay. Set this to something lower, like that. Okay. So, this is the node group. And let's go back out. And we have a bunch of nice data to use 
Okay, so let's try to uh, test the UV. I'm gonna create a noise texture. There we go, and put this in here. So you see now each of the uh, threads has a nice texture to it. And let's make the texture a little bigger. So you see we now have some very nice color variation around like so. And also, I can use this ID to generate some variation to uh, this noise as well. So let's use this uh, color of the white noise, okay, and uh, create a vector map. Subtract this by 0.5. There we go. And scale it by a number. Let's just leave it as one for now. And finally, add these together like so. So I can now increase this to have some different noise for individual strands. So basically, this will break up the noise randomly. Now let's use this to uh, randomize the colors of uh, this, the thread. But first, let me just increase the contrast a little, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, there we go. There we go. It looks much better, right? Now we need to configure some additional inputs for the weave engine. The first thing we need to configure is the color itself. So put in the, the group input and connect these colors. And this will be color one. And this will be color two. And uh, I'm gonna move the gap down below like that. So now I can change the color of the fabric from outside. There we go. And I also need a number to control the size of the, the texture itself. Now, normally in Blender, if you increase the scale, you have smaller texture, right? But I don't like this. I want higher number to have like bigger texture and lower number to have smaller texture. It just makes more sense to me that way. Okay, let's go back in here. And as you can see, if I increase the scale, the texture becomes like smaller and I decrease the scale, the texture becomes bigger. This is kind of opposite of what I want. I want, uh, I want the opposite of this. So I'm going to create a math node and I will divide one by a certain number. Let's say, just say one for now. And I will multiply this by 100 and connect this to the scale. Okay. Now this second value will be the size of the texture. See. So right now, if I set this to one, you have this size, right? And if I increase this to two, you see twice the size, okay? And let's try 0 0.1, you see? So this number here will be the size of the texture. So connect this to the input and uh, call this size, okay? And this will be on top right below the UV map because this is probably the most useful parameter. Now, with this, we have an additional problem. That is the uh, normal. So let's say we have this size, the normal is correct, everything looks good. But if I set this to 0 0.01 and zoom in, now I think that's too much, let's say 0.1. So you see the normals becomes uh, rather ugly, right? This is because the height information is the same. It's just the texture becomes smaller. So you see, we need to adjust the, the height information based on the size as well. So Let's go all the way here. All right, this is the bump. And let's create another group input node, okay? And uh, let's just set this to one for now. And I will multiply this with a height scale value. There we go. And let's put this above the gap parameter. And we will multiply this with a very small number before it's 0 0.01, so it's uh, good. This number is good. Now, I also want to multiply this with the size, like that. So, you see, if I set the size to 1, the texture becomes bigger, but the normals remain remains uh, pretty much the same. And let's try 10. The normal map is still good. And let's try 0 0.0. Let's try 0 0.5. So, it's still good. And uh, this is the correct way to make the normals. We are almost there. Now it's about time we create some parameters to adjust the, the weave itself. So let's go down here, the combine XYZ that we created earlier, and we will connect this to the group input node as well. Okay. And this will be 
up, this will be down, and this will be shift. Okay, and none of these can be smaller than one. Okay, and one final step, I'm going to create a panel. This is going to be we settings. Okay, and I'm going to put these in. Okay, so the weave engine is pretty much done. We have the colors, we have the IDs, we have UVs, we have mask, alpha, and normals. Okay, everything is there to be used. And so this weave engine will generate some very nice textures for you and depend on your need, you can use the shaders to uh, mix together a nice fabric shader for yourself. And again, let's test the engine itself, let's say, up by one and down by two, by three, and then shift by one. Let's try one, four, and two. So you see, we have some very nice texture going on. So with this generator, you can generate a lot of different types of fabric with just a few clicks. And you can just increase the gap to make it something like a mesh. And uh, right now we are not using any alpha, so we can't see through this fabric, but we have this alpha channel right here if you want the fabric to be see through okay all right if you made it this far then congratulations you have a very nice weave engine for yourself with this engine you can generate a bunch of different fabric materials with just a few clicks and again for those of you who don't want to go through all the hassles of creating this weave engine then my weave engine is up for sale on my gumroad store i'll leave the links in the description and there is one special feature about the weave engine that i put up for sale is this use back face feature right this thing is not included in the tutorial because it's a little too complicated. But basically, let's check out this one. So here you see this vertical, I mean, this horizontal thread is going up above the others. And if you look down here, you see the three threads below. So you see this one is above and three below. So basically, if you buy this version, then you will also get the backside of the fabric. And you can turn off the backside to have the, the front and the back exactly the same. Alright, with that, the tutorial is finished. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.